is related. We have to study more to find out just how detailed it is. We don't know that, so we think that the human being is the highest production in nature, the greatest achievement. The human being is lost up more and more of nature than his own kind than any disease. He's got a lousy record. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they tell you in school that the seed is the beginning of a plant. How do you know it is the end product? Because it's small. You know, the seed may be the maximum expression of genetics for the next tree. A child, I say, is the beginning of an adult. Two adults get together, the sperm mixes with the ovum, and you get a new product. Yeah. So a child is not necessarily the beginning, it's a transmission and the end product, not the beginning. The seed is the end product. But to me, it's not the beginning. Now a tree has in a seed the memory of the whole tree. Yeah. Every leaf, the bark, the metals I have, the memory metals only have one memory. So we should study seeds. How they have a thousand memories or three thousand. What is that product? How does it work? That will give us a good insight into the future for computers and everything else. Yeah. If you want to increase the memory, the question is, what is memory? How does, what is it physically? And if the thing you say, I don't know, then you pursue it. And uh, they have talked about this, the anthropologists and uh, the geneticists think in terms of the genes. Yeah. They think that there's a Republican gene nowadays. <laughs> That's stupid because you're a Republican because you're in a Republican environment. Yeah. It's easier for me to understand, but I don't think there's a communist gene or a gay gene. I think you're made that way by different aspects of your environment. So to me, there's no good, bad, no right, no well. wrong. Man makes all that up. He says he's driving on the wrong side of the street. Or in America, <laughs> you'd get a ticket driving on the side of the street. So, right, wrong, good, bad, I said, King Solomon had a thousand wives. The people that read the Bible respect him. He'd be arrested today as a super bigamist. And a judge does nothing all day long but judge people. The Bible says, judge not, lest you be judged. So they're all acting in violation of their own beliefs. Yeah. You have so to swear on the Bible. <laughs> man could be a fantastic organism, or he could be a jerk and destroy the earth. The next 20 years will tell you whether there's intelligent life on earth. I doubt it today. You know what I mean? Yeah. As long as you have armies, navies, ballistic missiles, nuclear bombs, yeah. cobalt bombs, submarines that have more destructive power in one submarine, one missile than all the wars in history. Is that intelligent no. life? So I doubt that way. But we could be. You know what I mean? It's paradise or oblivion. No in between. And if we don't accept the responsibility for our own future, others will do our thinking for us. Yeah. It's called fascism. Or just uh Democracy with the uh, multi uh, nationals at the top. It's not easy to turn people around. <coughs> it's easy to burn you alive and call you a witch yeah. and to change all the books. You know, they also found out that alcoholism was very prevalent in Ireland. Yes. And did you know that the uh, eating potatoes, a lot of potatoes, give you a high propensity toward alcoholism? Oh, I didn't know that. See, the Jews never used to have alcoholics. When they begin to eat more potatoes, the Jews are getting alcoholism. Oh. So the 
there's so many different things that we have to stop. When people keep saying to me, what will people do when machines do everything? We haven't even begun to examine what can be done. We don't even know how a single cell divides yeah. today. And Einstein said, when I was a kid, he said, I'd like to understand the mind of God. I said, look, he by that he meant how nature works. Just try to understand how a single cell divides. Don't be so ambitious. And understand the mind of all of nature. That's bullshit words. And I used to ask Einstein, how would you conceive of the future? He says, I don't deal with that. He just he was a socialist, but he, he never touch government, how it works, how money works. He was in celestial mechanics. And then there's a guy in the wheelchair who can't even talk anymore. And he talks about particle physics. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, Hawkins. Hmm? Stephen Hawkins? Yes. Yeah. Now Stephen Hawking, to me, is not a scientist. Otherwise he'd look at the Earth and say, my God, it's falling apart. I better concern myself with how to restore the earth and invite. He's not a scientist, he's focused on math. And that's a danger. If you just focus your whole life on math alone, you can tell me where the planet Venus will be 4,000 years from now. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in this fucking world that's moving toward destruction of the environment. Yeah. So scientists should be at the forefront of demanding social change. They're so ignorant and so specialized in their field that they stick in their field. If they were real scientists, they say, what makes war? What makes serial killers? What makes people that are creative and the difference between some people that aren't? What are the factors I have to know? They're not into that yet. So science is a rudimentary field today. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, do I think you? I do. I think I do. Okay. So you also think that uh, space stations, such as the International Space Station, is a waste of they time? They could be used for dropping nuclear weapons in the future yeah. and guiding them right to targets. Man is not wise enough yet to go out into space. He's going to fuck up that area yeah. with guided missiles, <laughs> and the next war will be partly fought out there. If you understand, man is very stupid. Yeah, Look at the Pentagon. A bunch of grown men working on destruction of the Earth systems. They think they're there to defend the country. The way you defend the country is to bridge the difference between nations, not kill them. That's what's missing. That's what the Venus Project is about. Bridging the difference. Restructuring human values to make the world a better place. Restoring the damaged reefs, the oceans, the forests. Those are all the things that'll keep us alive. Yeah. If we destroy those, there is no future. Exactly. Okay. That's what the Venus Project is about. It's quite an it's important, important point to make. Political system. Yeah, most people look at the architecture and, you know, a lot of people, Jack, look at the architecture and they say, oh, you know, uh, it's all about fancy sort of Thunderbird looking architecture, you know, not interested yeah. in that. They're not really looking at the deeper um, meaning of the Venus Project, which is the actual change of the social system. You don't even know there are such things. Yeah. Most scientists think that government knows what they're doing. I guess they do. Otherwise they form a group and never make weapons. In other words, when Einstein, Yuri, uh, and all these scientists got together, Oppenheimer to make the atom bomb. They assume that the government would be intelligent enough to say to the Japanese, we have a terrible weapon, we're going to blow it up 30 miles out of the ocean to show you what we have. We'd rather not drop it on your cities. And they went to President Truman, who had a hat store. He was a hat salesman. And they said, Please drop it out 30 miles. He says, I don't want those guys around me anymore. Yeah. And he dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He killed hundreds of thousands of people. And they won't forget that. 
30 years from now when they get their technology. You only build resentment with war. Yeah, you only would. Um, You're going to build hatred yeah. over the future. Now, how do you say to people, I'm sorry, Harry Truman was a jerk and dangerous. I told you he was a hat sell. And George Washington had 300 slaves. He was the first president of the United States. He was an asshole. Yeah. So I'm saying, not only are they stupid, they're dangerous. Politicians are all the same. So we need to do some hard work because it isn't just the schools we want to change. It's the military, the average person. That's why we want to make a movie. We need money to make a movie and the movie can get to millions of people in one month. Yeah, that's I, right. I lecture at the most to 500 people at a time. That isn't much, but a movie can get to millions of people. And all the guys that make these liberal movies show you how corrupt some politics are without offering a substitute, yeah. a direction, an alternative. You leave people in midair. Yes. Like you know Alex what Jones, I'm yeah. about? Alex Jones we, makes. We have to write to these guys that have the money and the power to make movies to get behind the Venus Project, otherwise there'll be no future. I have tremendous fear of human stupidity. Because it's not their fault either. They're brought up in a, an environment that says you live in the greatest country in the world. You know. Well, I'm really very much afraid of normal people. You understand? No. I have fear of their judgment. Normal people? Normal means fucked up. Oh. <laughs> Remember I use the word normal. Okay. It means distorted by society. Oh, it means indoctrinated. What? It means indoctrinated. Yes, indoctrinated. Okay. The false values, not just indoctrinated. The gods and demons. They, in the Arab world, they say it is the will of Allah. If I design a bridge and it caves in, and I say it's the will of Allah, yeah. you say fuck you. It's your math <laughs> that's off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. They yeah. can blame anything on the will of Allah. The death of a child, the will of Allah. It's a, it's a disease which we haven't learned to conquer yet. You know, ruptured appendicitis, whatever it is, it's not the will of Allah. And that's, I'm a, that's what I mean by I'm afraid. And the, the science, Christian scientists think that if you trust in medicine, you don't trust in God. So if your kid's stomach turns blue and they get high fever, you know it's in his hands, so you pray to him instead of taking him to the hospital. If the kid dies, the people says, I have faith in God, and he will turn it around. If you go to a doctor, you don't have faith in God. Yes. They're brought up that way. Are they bad? No. No parents are bad. They don't want their kid to die, but they're told it's in his hands. Even doctors talk that way. After the operation, they well, my son live, and she that's in his hands from now on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's not good. Just say we don't know enough about the disease to fully handle it. We don't know what will happen from here on out. That's honest. When a doctor says it's in his hands, that's placating the gods. Like bringing an apple to the teacher.